Greetings, beloved. Welcome to Narrow Gate Channel. Another beautiful day our Father God has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I welcome those who just joined Narrow Gate Channel. Let us learn together its operation. Give Jesus your 100%. In 2024, beloved, I'm wrapping up all the messages that our Father has given me. And it's my last year on YouTube. Our Father is done, beloved. We serve a powerful God, the greater young, the one and only risen king, the only wise God. In him are hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah. We continue, beloved. Today I'm going to cover the key of David. And I will read the word of God from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7. The word of God says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. That is the powerful word of God, beloved. The word of God says that these things says he that is holy. He that is true. He that has the key of David. And when he openeth, no man shutteth. And when he shutteth, no man openeth. And it is none other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He has the key of David. When he closes the door, no man can open it. And when he opens the door, no man can close it. Praise the name of the Lord. He does not only have the keys of hell and death. He has the key of David as well. So when you go back to the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22 is a prophecy to Judah in Jerusalem. God sent prophet Isaiah to go and warn the children of Judah in Jerusalem. To warn them of their evil deeds. And they did not heed the warnings of God. They continued to live in sin. And God was warning them that he will send foreigners to come and take them to captivity. He will send the Babylonians to go and take them to captivity. However, they did not heed the warnings of God. They did not repent. They continued to do their celebrations. They continued in their last. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is in that chapter where we get to hear about Eliakim, who succeeded a man called Shebna. Shebna was a royal steward. In our days, we can say a prime minister. The word of God says that he was proudful and he was misusing his power. So that was his downfall. And God announced through prophet Isaiah that he will strip him off of his royal stewardship and it will go to Eliakim. I am going to just give you a summary of Isaiah chapter 22. The main verse that is relevant to this message is verse 22. But I just want to give you a summary of what Isaiah chapter 22 is talking about. 
And we can see that again, it was the foreshadow of the Messiah. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 22 from verse 1 to 5. Prophet Isaiah expresses his deep grief about the upcoming turmoil. He describes the desolation and the fear in the city of Jerusalem. The inhabitants, unaware of the looming catastrophe, are found celebrating rather than mourning. Verse 6 to 8 is God's judgment. The city, which is under attack by foreign invaders, is left defenseless as God has withdrawn his protection due to the people's disobedience. Verse 12 to 14 is inappropriate celebrations that the children of Judah were doing. God calls for mourning and repentance, but the inhabitants indulged in joy and excessive lustful indulgence, which further invites God's wrath. Verse 15 to 19 is the downfall of Shebna. God instructs Isaiah to confront Shebna, the palace administrator, for his pride and misuse of power. God declares Shebna's downfall, stating he will be thrown out of his position. Verse 20 to 25, God announces Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, as the new steward who will responsibly manage the affairs of the kingdom. I will now read only three verses in Isaiah chapter 22. Now that I have given you the summary of the entire chapter, the word of God says, I will read from verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle. And I will commit thy government into his hand and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. So he shall open and none shall shut. And he shall shut and none shall open. That is the powerful word of God, beloved. Verse 22 was repeated in Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. That when he openeth the door, no man will shut. And when he shut the door, no man will open. So Eliakim will be given the key of David in the book of Isaiah chapter 22. Shebna's responsibilities were to manage the affairs of the kingdom. So as one of his responsibilities, if he opens a door, no man can close that door. And if he closes the door, no man will open that door. Praise the name of the Lord. As a steward of the king, he had that power. He had the key. So if he closed the door, no one can open it except him as part of his responsibilities as a steward in the kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. So this man, Shebna, was proudful. He was abusing power. So God was not happy with him. And he said that he will take away his responsibilities and give them to Eliakim. He will give Eliakim the key of David. And when Eliakim closes the door, no man will open it. And when he opens it, no man will close it. 
That is the key of David. Praise the name of the Lord. So this was a metaphor, a foreshadow of the Messiah. Jesus is the one who has the key of David. As he said in Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. When he opens the door, no man can close it. And when he closes it, no man can open it. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is the meaning of the key of David. By now, we are fully aware, beloved, that Jesus has all the authority in heaven, here on earth, and earth beneath. Praise the name of the Lord. He is going to take the throne of his father David in the new earth, the king of Israel. So the key of David is in his hands. Praise the name of the Lord. So who was Eliakim? Eliakim mentioned in the Bible was the son of Hilkiah, as I have read. He succeeded Shebna as the royal steward or prime minister for King Hezekiah of Judah. His name means whom God will raise or the resurrection of God. In the New Testament, Eliakim is also an ancestor of Joseph, the adopted father of Jesus Christ. So that is a quick summary, beloved, of Isaiah chapter 22. That is where we heard about the key of David. And again in Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. Praise the name of the Lord. I think this message is quite straightforward, beloved. I love you all. Stay blessed as we continue to learn. Bye-bye.